Hi folks, welcome to 8-Bit Retro Journal. Um, I have this uh, Canon Type Star 10-2 um, typewriter, and uh, it's from 1994, and someone locally gave it to me. Um, if you notice, I have the EP Brother EP22 uh, here. This was the one I did a video on that was also a printer that I could hook to my QL, and this was in 1983, and I used that in college as my roommate actually owned one. Uh, both of these are thermal uh, printers, so they use thermal paper or can have special cartridges to print on. The cartridges are hard to get, to, uh, but the, the thermal paper is not. And so I, I did a demo on this uh, uh, in a couple of QL videos. Um, the, let me make sure this is closed. Nope. There you go. Uh, this one is, uh, again, about 11 years later, um, and uh, I, I think this likely was an unused one because it came with a cartridge and this cartridge itself uh, literally has no uh, I mean there's, there's there's no sign of use on it whatsoever these things are expensive on eBay these go from 60 to 100 and, uh, 120 dollars so um, kind of ridiculous although you can find some for 25 dollars uh, but I'm not going to use this one um, it also has a, a lid similar to that the other one, it's again, it's slightly bigger, but it's still a pretty small, very portable printer. Um, the uh, the print head is 36 by 24 dot thermal transfer printer. Um, and uh, keyboard feels really good. Uh, it doesn't unfortunately have a serial interface, so you can just use it as a typewriter. It does have an internal spell checker. Um, from what I uh, glean, as I recall, this one had a, a three modes you could type into its memory, which would have like 2K of memory. You could type immediately, or you could type until you see the window and it types. This only has two modes, either type an entire line or type uh, or, or type immediate. And it only has about 100 character of memory. But it does have a built-in dictionary for spell checking. And what it does is it just beeps at you if the word is wrong. So that's kind of cool. Um, but... Uh, uh, the, the type itself is also really nice, and I'll show that to you in a second. The one weird thing about the the, um, the keyboard, even though it feels really nice, it's just a rubber dome. It has and it has no additional moving parts. It has literally the keys themselves, and then the the pl base plate. But there's no other little part, little key switches that you would buy, and there's no it springs even. It's the rubber dome that pushes it up. And these keys are just uniquely made in a weird way. Let me uh, zoom in on this one. As you can see, uh, it has the inner inner cylinder, and then it's got these two tabs and a, and a stabilizing bar. And it's these two tabs that kind of hold it in, but other than that, this is just plastic on the other plastic with no spring. So it's basically just a really cheaply made, uh, let me zoom back out. It's one of the cheapest keyboards I've ever seen. Um, but the reason I have these keys off actually is because the one, the Q and uh, this one right here, which is a special character, actually end up getting stuck. And so I, I have this uh, piece of wood that's about the same circumference, except I had to put a little bit of tape on there. And if I put it into this one, which is my control one, I can literally bring it in and it, it'll pop right back up. So it works like a key. If I put it in this one, it stays down. It's very tight. And if I put it in this one, it's even tighter. And then this one is the least of the tight, but it's still the key stays down. So I've been trying to figure out whereas again, if I put it in here, it just pops right back up. Yeah. So um so it's definitely the cylinders on these are just narrow and, and are from the factory, I guess. I built this rig here, which is another long piece of wood, which is thinner, and I put, uh, I glued um, uh, sandpaper around, and the aim is going to be that I'm going to bring it in here and then sort of twirl it around to try to widen it. Um, as far as features goes, um, and, uh, you know, for temporary typing, I actually have this little piece where I can stick it in here, and, and so just to demonstrate that the keys actually work. That's the one that was a control one. Uh, that's a weird, that was a special character. This is the Q key. This was the one key. So they all work. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, uh, let's actually first see if um, I can zoom in on that. I don't know if you can see it or not. So what you see is that, um, let me get a pencil. 
the you have your regular line of characters and then you start having so it allows for background so you can have a stipple pattern a line pattern and sort of a, a diagonal pattern this is the entire one is done with i think the stipple pattern uh, you can also have wide words it makes it look like it's 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 a bigger font um although it's the same height so it has uh, some features in terms of playing around with fonts and characters much more than this and like i said it has a higher um uh, resolution, although the, there's a type star 4 that I saw on the uh, internet in a video that actually gives you multiple, it gives you two fonts versus this just gives you one but lets you give more characters. It also has a built in spell checker. Uh, did they say 60,000 words? Well, I'll put it in the comments. And you have American or, or, or UK English. So, uh, and what it does is it'll beep at you if it, if it doesn't find a word in there and you can turn it on using the code and the, I think it's the code of the spell checking. Yeah, right here. Um, and so, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let me just show you briefly um, LCD screen. So there's an on switch that uses uh, four D cell batteries, or you can have a center negative uh, six volt one amp power brick. So let me uh, turn this on. So it's interesting here too that on this unit, the the plate kind of goes up and down like that. Here it kind of pivots this way. It's a little bit annoying, so if I put it in the immediate type mode, and so that means it has to be not in line mode, but in character mode, so I press this one, and then I want uh, not automatic, but uh, uh, I do it. Yeah, so if I type um, uh, hello world, you can see that, uh, and again, if I turn spell check on, uh, I can say, how are you? Oh, what's going on? Uh, how are you? Comma. How it is going? Oh, so it doesn't do spell checking unless, um, so you have to put it in line mode. So if I put it in line mode, which is code three for the L, and now if I go, how are you doing? Oh, I gotta tell spell check on. So I can correct this, so it's in here. Um, how are, so if I turn spell check on, how are you doing? So it, it just beeps when, when there's a mistake doing today yeah so what's interesting then if you hit return it will just print the whole thing so that's that's one way to do as a spell correct but there is no way to have it sort of uh trail off and print what you have and have this be a buffer window which i really liked about this one the brother um as i said they uh oh and they also let you do so there's a switch here let's see if this makes it darker so uh how oh, oops so that's nice that it beeps at you, how are you, because you you don't have to look at it if you're a touch typist. And I am a touch typist. Um, doesn't seem to make a difference. So it must be if you're using the um, the cartridge that it makes it darker. But it, it is really nice print. So I can, if I do wide mode, I can do, um, I think it's this one, so I've got to do... Yeah, so that's wide mode, so welcome, oops, welcome here today. And you can see that it gives you the much larger um, looking, uh, and again, if I do, uh, so this is gives me a gray background, so here is a gray background yeah so you can see that it's almost just like it's smeared for that for that lettering um so there's lots of, go of going on here which is interesting in terms of what the print head does and like I said you can use the um, you can use cartridges if you want but uh, unfortunately again it doesn't have an, uh, a way to hook it up to a computer so no serial port which would have been really nice the uh you know the nice thing is that it is thermal so but 
but it's as I said, there's the there's also the correction uh, cartridge. So the way these things work is that they actually burn on the ink onto the paper, just like a laser printer does. So perhaps the um, the correction cart, the 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 100 CR that's correctable, uh, perhaps it, the ink doesn't completely bond with the paper, uh, so that when it's burned on, it can be uh, taken off. Um, I don't know how if this. I mean, is this printer able to do that? Probably not. So uh, these cartridges are also for other ones because uh, there is no setup to put a, a correction tape on there as well. And I don't think the um, the cartridge itself comes with correction tape. So um, that's interesting. In any case, it's nice and portable. The other cool thing it actually has built into it, um, besides uh, specialty fonts, is um, um, a type test, a typing tester. So you can. Uh, It'll give you a minute, it'll give you characters of type, you type them, and then it'll give you a percentage of how many you got wrong or right. So it can help you become a touch typist. So that's something that, you know, you can have software on a computer that can do this, but I think something like this is probably ideal for that. I mean, I learned on an old Selectric typewriters, uh, but but this one, you know, nice and portable and, and quiet. You know, it works on, similar to this one, on four D-cell batteries. Um, even though this keyboard is kind of crappy in terms of how it's, Design, it feels really good, so I can't complain about that. Again, it, it does not allow up to 2K of documents internally, which this does. So this is, for being 11 years difference, 1994 versus 1983, this one is remarkably, um, you know, Brother did a really nice job with that. The keyboard is not great, but other than that, you know, certainly, uh, and, and the and the print heads are, are, are they 8 by 10 or something like that, as opposed to, uh, you know, the, the higher resolution of these are. Um, that would have been nice to have on that, but other than that, uh, this one does a pretty nice job, uh, especially if you have a, a cartridge. So what I want to do next is I'm going to um, see if I can't put these keycaps on again after sanding this. All right, here's a close-up of my technique. So I've, I, I found a, a stick that it was just near enough that when I put some sandpaper over it, it actually um, uh, helped it. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going to... Uh, uh, what I need to do is figure out how deep to make this. So I probably should mark this with a marker oh, because I don't want to go too deep. So I'm going to say, it's unfortunately it's a very long stick. Uh, I'm going to say don't go beyond. So I'm making a mark. Shouldn't impact the sanding if I go beyond that. I don't want to put it in, in here. And I'm just going to turn it. Yeah. That's the idea, right? Just want to kind of create a nice, it won't be smooth, but it'll be bigger. And the test will be if this thing goes down and it doesn't get stuck. And it still does. All right, so we got more to do. This is exciting stuff here, huh? I'm very high tech. Now, I do have a Dremel, but I was worried about using a Dremel and making too much of a mess. So this is much more control that I have in terms of just turning this. And this is pretty rough sandpaper, so it does get stuff done. I mean, ideally, I would take the whole thing apart and run a drill bit through it. But even that scares me because I feel like, ah, oh, it's getting looser now. I feel like I'm starting fire. <laughs> but uh, the idea here is that, uh, is this, this is coming on camera? Yeah, no impact. Um, yeah, the idea is that I want to, without damaging the rubber dome, And there's definitely stuff coming out. Yep, this is definitely having an impact. So, um, it's just a long stick. I, I use this stick for other things. That's why I didn't just break a piece off. Uh, let's see if this... Ah, oh, it's still stuck. I worry that it's actually... So I might have to go further. I might have to press this down. I don't want this to have any sharp edges. I don't think it does. So what I want to do is bring this in further down. Yep, 
and just turn it some more. It's really doing the job and it's not making too much of a mess. Now the shiny inside coating is going to be gone, so I don't know if I'm going to have to try to buff it or not, or if it's plastic on plastic. I, I don't want it to end up ruining the keycap. There we go. And uh, again, the test. I'm going to blow on it. All right, the test is going to be critical. Oh, I think that is that has done it. Look at that. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down and blow out all the stuff uh, just to make sure that I don't ruin, uh, I had too much dirt. I mean, obviously dirt collects in this like dust anyway, so. But uh, this is definitely going easier now. So I think that was a good rig that I built. All right, on to the next one. They've been... Uh, sanded and uh, I, I also blew out the air I, I actually took the uh, picked it up and did that so now I just want to clean them one final time with a little bit of 50 percent IPA get any sort of remnant dirt off of that there's only so much you can do all right so I think uh The moment of truth is going to come. Let's try this out again on this side. But yeah, I think uh, we can try to put these keys back in. So the number one key is this one right here. And so it should just fit in like that. And again, just kind of press it down. I don't know if I got it in there or not. Did not get it in there. Yep. So I just want to break it. Let's see if I can take it back out. There we go. It's back out. Yep, so just want to be careful that I get it in where it's supposed to go. So, uh, goes in. And then it just kind of pushes in here. Right, yeah, so this goes in. And you push this in. There we go. Seems to work. All right, let's try the Q key. Same issue, so Q is going to be up here. Let's see if this will work. Uh, okay, that's it. I just have to get this side in. There we go. That works beautifully. Okay, and then here, I believe there's the three two key that goes to this side. Let me check the keyboard layout one time, but I believe that it is the. Of course, let me show you the keyboard layout. So it's three two is is the furthest one. So this guy right here, and it uh, goes in like that. quite make it. I don't know why it's getting stuck on, but uh, there 
I can right back out. Nothing broke. So yeah, unfortunately, unlike other keys, you do not want to... Uh, okay, I think you want to get this one in first, and then there we go. So that one works again, and this one always works, so I didn't have to do anything with this. Uh, it goes in like that. So if I can get this in without breaking it, I'll be a very happy camper. So kind of want to get this side in. Oh. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Seems to work. So uh, turn it back on. So now can we get, uh, if I do uh, line mode, so that is Q1, weird symbol. Yep, that works. Uh, what was that? Yeah, it's the uppercase Q1, exclamation, okay. exclamation. Yep. Okay, good. So, keyboard is fixed. It was kind of a weird error, to be honest, uh, um, in terms of uh, that these, and it does, yeah, it's no longer sticking. Now, it doesn't have the glide. Oh, I'm just going to turn it on and off. Yeah, looks good. Anyway, uh, this is the Typestar 10 2. Um, not something I use for my computer, but uh, the fact that it has a, a built in typing tutor, which sort of does in a minute, uh, uh, gives you letters to type, you type them, and then tells you your score, actually could make for a good. Uh, tool for to teach someone how to type so that might be useful and again typers are kind of cool anyway and i like that it can do different fonts uh, 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 so i probably will keep this although it won't become part of my computer collection i just wanted to share that with you since i did do the brother ep22 so i hope you enjoyed that it was a little bit something different uh, but uh, type star uh, canon type star 10 dash double i or two um, 1994, so 11 years after this one, and the technology, you know, changed some things, but not others. Interesting. All right, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.